Okay, the Temple Institute are are Jewish people that are trying to encourage the the coming of Messiah. And there's two theories. One theory is some say, you know what, the Messiah is going to come. He doesn't need our help. And when he makes up his mind, he's going to come. But if we do things that that please him, he's liable to come quicker. There's another group, and they say this, that let's get things ready. Uh, and so the Temple Institute is among those people who say, let's get things ready. Uh, and so they have made authentic items so that once the Messiah comes, they can begin sacrifices again. Hosea chapter 3 talks about that, that after many years, they're going to return to sacrifices again. And so they take that literal. And so when you go through the Temple Institute, you're going to see items that are not replicas, but they're actual items made as close as they can to the items that were used, let's say, in the Old Testament, and uh, the priest garments, the, the proper color of them, uh, the size and shape of the of the shofar and and uh, the the silver trumpets, uh, all these things are are authentic, ready to to be used for for service. Among the things that they're looking for is a way to purify two things. One is the Sanhedrin, and then to purify the priesthood, and then they can begin the sacrifices again based on Numbers 19. So these are people that have dedicated themselves to the study, the actual detailed study of bringing back sacrifices again to the Temple Mount. And when we go over to their website, their very own website themselves, I find this so interesting and I wanted to get your take on it. Where is the Ark of the Covenant located? Well, they say they're at the Temple Institute. The Ark of the Covenant is one of the most fascinating of all temple-related subjects. There are many theories about what happened to the Ark of the Covenant, and speculation abounds as to its actual location. Some people think it was taken to the Vatican together with other temple vessels, such as those depicted in the Roman monument, the Ark Arch of Titus. There are many authentic ancient historical chronicles and even more popular legends that attest to many sacred vessels having been taken away to Rome. However, this does not apply to the most holy feature of the first temple, the Ark. While some claim to have evidence the Ark is in Ethiopia, and of course, moviegoers were treated to a fanciful version of the story in Raiders of the Lost Ark, in reality, the expression lost Ark is not an accurate description for the Jewish people's point of view, because we've always known exactly where it is. So the Ark is hidden, quote, in quotes, and quite well, but it's not lost. Tradition records that even as King Solomon built the first temple, he already knew through divine inspiration that eventually it would be destroyed. Thus Solomon, the wisest of all men, oversaw the construction of a vast system of labyrinth, mazes, chambers, and corridors underneath the Temple Mount complex. He commanded that a special place be built in the bowels of the earth, where the sacred vessels of the temple could be hidden in case of approaching danger. It goes on to say that tradition teaches that the king of Israel who lived about 40 years before the destruction of the first temple, commanded the Levites to hide the ark. Together with the original menorah and several other items, you know the menorah folks, lighting the menorah, the candle, in this secret hiding place which Solomon had prepared. This location is recorded in our sources, and today there are those who know exactly where this chamber is. And we know that the ark is still there, undisturbed, and waiting for the day when it will be revealed. An attempt was made a few years ago to excavate towards the direction of this chamber. This resulted in widespread Muslim unrest and rioting. They stand a great deal to lose if the Ark is revealed, for it will prove to the whole world there really was a holy temple, and thus that the Jews really do have a claim to the Temple Mount. The official position of the Islamic law, the body of governors over the Temple Mount, is that there never was a holy temple, and that the Jews have no rights whatsoever to the place. Well, Dr. Woods, or, uh, excuse me, Dr. Linstead, uh, are they saying that this place is hidden? And even if, say, Benjamin Netanyahu wanted to go to it, uh, it's morning time in Israel now, but if he wanted to go over there this morning and enter there, would he be able to get to it? Or is it so back in there they're going to have to channel in to get into that room? What do you know? Let me just say this about the, the film Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, when... What the, the real story that was taking place, there was a man by the name of Vindal Jones, and he was searching for the ashes of the red heifer. When Hollywood heard the story, they said no one's going to know what the ashes of the red heifer are. So instead, they, they changed his name to Indiana Jones, and they, and they changed the object from 
from the ashes of the red heifer to the Ark of the Covenant. I never knew this. So I never yeah, knew so, this. So, Fascinating. Yeah, that, that no, that's that's actually the the story. And of course, I knew Vindel, and uh, Vindel and I uh, were together. I often took people on my trips to go see Vindel, but we had quite a disagreement because we began to disagree theologically on some things. He was a great archaeologist, but but in terms of theology, we, we had our differences. <laughs> now, well, here's the here graphic. The, I, I put up the, the first one for you. Okay, yeah, great. Now, if you look at that picture, you'll see, you see the, the golden dome. And just to the north of that, that's really where the temple stood. Uh, you see the, the thing that says Western Wall. That's not the Western Wall of the temple. That's the Western Wall of the retaining wall. In the upper picture, Notice uh, the the green line that extends from that western wall, parallel to the uh, you know parallel to the dome of the rock, and you'll see, and that's called the Rabbi's Tunnel. When we go to Israel, one of the things that's so enjoyable is to actually go down in Rabbi's Tunnel. Oh, you can walk in there. The, oh yeah, we make it a we make an appointment a year ahead of time, uh, because not many people get to go in there. But it's fascinating because in there, you see the size of the stones that are part of the foundation of the temple. They're the size of a city bus. Hmm. Uh, we, we don't even know how they, they could lift those, put them into place. Well, I guess we have some, some guesses, but, but we don't know for sure. But in building that network, because see, in order to, to make that a, a temple mount, that was, a, that was Mount Moriah. It, it was uh, had a mountain top. Today, if we wanted to build a temple on a top of a mountain, we'd get dynamite, we'd blow the top of the mountain off. But they they didn't do that. <laughs> they couldn't do that. They didn't have dynamite at that time. So what they did, they would build a retaining wall, and then they would fill that retaining wall in. Then they put a, a plateau on top of you know stones to make a flat surface, and they build on top of that. So the western wall is a retaining wall to make a flat surface to build on. So inside and underneath that temple mount, they call it the, the holiest 35 acres on planet Earth. That's how special it is. But we know for a fact that there are passages, not, not just dozens, hundreds of them. And in those passages, there have been all kinds of artifacts found, and we know that there is more hidden. So that's a possibility. There's another possibility, and that is it could have been moved to Qum Qumran. And let me, let me try to give a little bit of credence to that, because you see, when Rome came and destroyed the temple, the Jews thought, you know what, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll persecute us for a while. After a while, they get tired, and they'll leave. So as they watched them begin to destroy Jerusalem, and they thought they would destroy the temple, the Jews took the holy items out of the temple some they hid in these caverns, these passageways under the Temple Mount. Some they actually took with them on their journey from Jerusalem down to Masada. And so that's how come in those caves, we call them the Qumran Caves because they're place, close to a place called Qumran, they have found, I think there's over 30 caves now that they found artifacts that indeed are temple artifacts. And there are incredible stories about the amount of gold you'll, you'll see in the picture that you have on the screen now, uh, up there by Qumran, the north end of the Dead Sea. Uh, they have explored, and, and we know that there's a, a load of gold there. I, I mean, I don't know personally, but I know this, that explorers and archaeologists like Bindle Jones and, and others, a man by the name of Jim Barfield, actually from Oklahoma, the History Channel, and we put a little five-minute video on our website, they, they talk about some of the finds they have. It's all in the copper scrolls of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Most of the scrolls were made of animal skins, but there was one called the copper scrolls. It was indeed made of copper, and it described the location where there were artifacts hidden that were important, and among those, there were bars of silver and gold. There was a copy of the scroll just like you are reading, and then there was a promise that there would be the ashes of the red heifer. Now, people believe that in the cave where the ashes of the red heifer are, the, that's how special those ashes are, and we'll talk about that in a moment. They believe that that's where the Ark of the Covenant is. So I think 
of all the theories, and there's, there's, I'm going to say there's five or six theories. One, like you mentioned, is they say it's in Rome. I don't think so. Uh, Bob Carnutz, a friend of mine, he believes it's in Ethiopia. I, I really don't think so. Others think that it's in Jordan, and, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think so. Some people think it's buried under Golgotha, so that when Jesus died, some of his blood sprinkled on, on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. I don't think that either. I think the most likely locations are the network of passages under the Temple Mount. And that's why that is so important, because you know what? Not only do the Jews think that if they find those ashes, and remember, they're looking for the ashes as much as they are the Ark of the Covenant, they can purify the Sanhedrin, they can purify the priesthood. So they wouldn't even they have to wait. Animal sacrifice. They wouldn't even have to wait for perfect red heifers. They'd already have the ashes to do it with. That's right. And the older rabbis believe that in Numbers 19, it says a perpetual statute. In other words, here's there's an argument. Is there 10 or 7? I'm, I'm going to say there's 10 just for the sake of argument. So when Moses offered up the first red heifer, and that was a miracle, because remember, all the animals that came with Jacob were spotted and speckled. That's what he took from his father-in-law. Somehow a, a red heifer comes up. God provides us a red heifer. He cremates it. He takes the ashes, puts it into a pot of calile. After 100 years or so, the ashes give way. They're, they're worn out. And then God provides another red heifer. But when you sacrifice the second red heifer, the pot of the first one is put on the body so that some of the ashes in the cremated second heifer are really the first one. And that's been done. And the last one, they, they believe, took place just weeks before the destruction of the temple in 7 AD. So if they can find that, they're going to have ashes all the way back to the days of Moses. And they think that those are sacred. The old priests say, we got to find those ashes because we want a continuation. The, the younger priests say, no, give me a red heifer and we'll start the process again. And so there's two denominations right now, but both of them this week with Passover week, the trouble on the Temple Mount last night, it, it, it literally exploded. There, there was a guy they just arrested because they thought he was going to go up there and sacrifice. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, and uh, I, you know, I got some unusual friends, and some of my friends are among those that get arrested because every year they try to they try to do a sacrifice on the Temple Mount. And uh, but now it's interesting because Ben Veer. Here it is. Here's uh, the, the article new... right there at Worldview Report. Sorry to interrupt. There it is. <laughs> Activists who call for Passover for sacrifices at the Temple Mount's arrested. It's on my website at worldviewreport.com. I saw that today. Yeah. By the way, I also saw yeah. another it... report too, and that has to do with. Uh, uh, Israel's Netanyahu delays the firing of Gallant, so that's a good news. Uh, I saw several yes. others related mm -hmm. to Israel today. A lot of a lot of stuff is uh, is starting to uh, really heat up over there. But keep going with what you were just saying, please. Well, you see, Ben Veer said this. Look, uh, let us go up to the Temple Mount. Let us pray. Let us celebrate Passover, and we promise we won't sacrifice a live animal. So that's the compromise that they made. Uh, they 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 are going to sacrifice live animals, but not on the Temple Mount. Why is this so important? Well, you see, when the Antichrist comes, he's going to make a promise to Israel. And what Israel wants more than anything else, they want to be able to, to return to sacrifices again. That's the number one. That's the hottest topic in all of Israel. It, it goes way beyond every other debate. And so if the Antichrist or if some person could guarantee that you can have peace, you can actually go up, you can pray, you can you can blow a shofar. Uh, they would they would they would sign an agreement. And here's what the Bible says: that when this guy tricks them into signing an agreement, he's going to cancel that agreement halfway through. He's going to say you can no longer sacrifice. You're going to have to stop your religious freedom. You're going to have to worship an image, and that image is going to be of me. And matter of fact, you're going to have to to have a mark of my mark in order to buy or sell. And so I really think that all this excitement is just paving the way really for not just to return to sacrifices, but I think it's going to be the, the pathway that an antichrist will take. And so that's why it's so important. One other thing, do you know that not only are the Jews excited about finding the ashes of red heifer, but the Arab people believe this, that whoever has the ashes will control the world. Wow. And so now you see why this is so important. And that's what's preventing us 
doing future digs in Qumran because it's right on the border of Israel and Jordan. It's a it's a political hotbed. And, and so that's why it can't be dug at this moment. Wow. So do you think they're going to find the, this uh, jar of uh, ashes or not? Yeah, I, I do. You do? But the question is, will they find it? Will, yeah. Will they find it before or after I'm raptured? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then finally, do you think they could get right up to the Ark of the Covenant now? Or is it is it closed off where they would actually have to tunnel in? Yeah, I think I think it's hidden well. If it is there, I think it's hidden well because you know what? There's too many people that would like to get their hands on it. So you don't think the and even so the it, you, don't, you don't even think the the rabbis could get up to it right now if they wanted to, those that know where it's at. Well, you know what? Several rabbis have said they know exactly where it is, and the last two that said they knew exactly where it is died before they told anyone where it is. Wow. But they keep making that claim, but they've never produced it. So I'm going to be honest. Uh, I, it's so politically hot. And and can you imagine what would happen if they produced that Ark of the Covenant? Oh, my. You talk about World War III. It yeah. would launch World War III immediately because, because the Palestinian Authority will not allow that to happen. Like Absolutely. you say, it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt the reality of the Temple Mount is Jewish.